Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is going to be EFL Season 32, our final Week 5 game in Premiership for this season. It's going to be a Cent EU versus Swift. I am Eepley. I'm joined by News Today casting alongside me and the ever wonderful but silent beta Sick Dance Production. How's it going? Good, Eepley. Uh, it's nice to be back on the casting coach, uh, or the virtual casting coach, because I think we've got a good game ahead of us today. Ascent EU and Swift, uh, very talented players on both these rosters. Uh, Ascent looking to just establish a bit more dominance and Swift quite badly needing points if they want to make playoffs. So all to play for tonight on logjam and process. Yeah, I think it's going to be um going to be interesting. You obviously you covered quite a few points just there, but just to give some context for this game, we we saw an absolutely huge upset of um Swift versus uh one of the Frenchy teams, the Amarok and Korback team. There was a, a big odd upset. A lot of people were not expecting it, and it ended up being, you know, spoilers, 5-1 for the Frenchies. So Swift have already lost a significant amount of points that they were really, they kind of needed to keep a hold of in order to, to ensure they get that top four place. So we were talking about this a little bit before the game started. Swift is going to have to cause some upset of their own from here on out to stand any chance at all of making that top four. It's going to be really, really hard. And honestly, I feel like the first step of that journey, it has to be today. Yeah, so starting off, they've got their game against Ascent today, uh, and then a week from now, thereabouts, they're playing the Theorist, and then they've got uh, the game against Vukrave, uh as their final Week 7 game. So this one's probably going to be their hardest of the three, but I mean, these are all good teams. Uh, we were watching and talking about um, some of the warm-up games that Ascent were streaming. Uh, and I believe some of the Swift players were also streaming. Uh, so Theorist, for example, Swift's next opponents, they were having a close game versus, versus Ascent uh, just before this, their, their fourth map of scrims tonight. Um, and you'd expect Ascent to be looking a bit more dominant against the Theorists. I mean, they're pretty much the standout second best team in Europe right now, and they've looked dominant against most teams outside of Seven. And I don't know if there's if what kind of team dynamics are going on, uh, but it looked a little bit shakier than from what I've seen otherwise recently. I don't know if it's worth reading too much into that, but Swift coming into this as the underdogs, uh, if Ascent are looking a bit shaky, then potentially we've got an upset on our hands. Yeah, I think that kind of situation, it's it's kind of almost got to be what Swift has to kind of hope for or plan for, something along those lines. Just you know, hope that the combination of maybe a slightly shakier looking ascent and the fact that we're seeing a map like logjam which you know it's we've seen a lot of prem teams already play it you know this is the very last showing we'll see it uh short of if it gets picked in playoffs but it is still a fairly new map and it is still kind of i feel like we're in that, that sweet period where it's just new enough that teams aren't fully kind of aware of every single aspect of it but we've seen enough of Ascent playing it. Like, Swift is going to be hyper aware of how much Ascent will be playing Credu, Sniper, to mid, you know? It isn't like that's going to suddenly happen and they're going to be completely thrown off and we'll have absolutely no idea. Like, that's not going to happen. They're going to be super hyper aware of it and they will have started to plan to directly counter that. So I, I feel like that, that little kind of niche period of time where that's going to be just the right amount of time for Swift to stand, I think, the best possible chance on a map like Logjam. I think Process is going to be a completely different beast. That's going to be hard regardless. Yeah, and, well, even Logjam uh, poses some difficulties to them because despite what their form might have looked out tonight, you know, most players are quite different in scrims and officials. And uh, if you look at these teams' Week 4 results, uh, Ascent had a 5-0 win over the Theorists on Logjam, whereas... Um, Swift lost that same map 2-1 to uh, Lavon Digging Camp. So if, you're, if we're going to try and do the kind of circular logic thing and compare their opponents and how they perform against their opponents and officials, then it does look like Ascent are the better team on Logjam. I'm not sure if that's replicated across their uh, recent scrim results as well, but I say in both situations, I mean, when you've got star players like Credu who can go for these... Uh, these snipers to mid plays like on logjam just as well as process he's been known to have so much impact throughout it so i think mid fights are going to need to be a, an area where swift are strong uh, especially if they want to not get a few rounds behind and have momentum fighting against them throughout this game i definitely agree i feel like in terms of options that swift have here um i think it's almost going to kind of come into things the fact that we've seen um gink one of the soldiers on swift very very comfortable sniping himself and in terms of these sniper mids if they wanted to directly counter it by running a sniper of their own i feel like that could almost be a reasonable option for swift because then that still allows them to have two scouts and obviously everyone knows how ridiculously powerful scout is as a class 
So being able to run two scouts, still have, you know, a kind of DM beast like Pappy and kind of Lucas to be able to take this position and still running a sniper directly to counter Credo. I feel like these are some options which are available. Unfortunately, I've not seen too much of um, what Swift has been doing in terms of uh, warming up and whether that's an option they tend to take. But it's something which, even if they're not fully practiced on, it's something which they can fall back to if they need to. Well, and the other thing with that option is, I mean, not only is Gink a star player on Sniper, um, if you wanted to have any soldier as your lone soldier on a team, Pappy's a pretty good person to do it. And it also frees up some heals for uh, Lucas. And of all the matchups on this team, if you look at uh, class for class, I think probably the biggest skill disparity comes in uh, Lucas and Phil. I think Phil is much more of a decision-making, consistency-oriented demo, uh, whereas Lucas has those... He has the, the skill level uh, and potential to just go off and have big moments and really be a, a force in DM fights. And I feel like if, if they do want to go for the sniper route, or even if they just want to get Lucas more involved, I think Seeds is a good player to support a, a, a firepower player like Lucas, and I think he could probably turn the tides of a few battles in this. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to scrappy DM fights, as much as you know, you've got the uh, the Finnish kind of power combo of um, of Ams and Credu. I I don't feel like you know Classy and Scruff are necessarily that far behind, really. And, and the way that I think it's all going to come down to kind of how they play with their team, because like you said, if 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 Lucas can pound out that damage and, and these scouts can can start moving forward, I feel like um, I feel like some of these scrappy fights they might not be too easy for Ascent, and it might not be something which Ascent are particularly used to kind of playing against. I, I feel like, you know, against a lot of teams in Prem, they will have got very used to just taking fights, winning fights, and just kind of moving on from there. But, yeah, you know, they, they might kind of uh, trip over their own ego a little bit. You never know. <laughs> well, we are readying up. Uh, we'll just briefly go over the rosters. So Swift is looking at Seeds on Medic, Lucas on Demo, uh, Pappy and Gink on Soldier, Classy and Scruff on the Scouts. Yep, running out to mid, we're going to see Credo and Ams on Scout, Phil on Demo, Drac and Salentes, incredible soldier combo on the soldiers and Condog on Medic. So this is it, arriving to mid, Phil and Lucas, about the same kind of time, but Lucas is getting much more aggressive, getting good damage early. Phil, super weak, is going to be narrow before anything happens for the rest of his team. Looking towards this far right hand side, the bombs are in, a lot of damage from the Swift players. Just, these Ascent guys are getting absolutely mulched in this corner, the frags are starting to come out on the side of Swift, and it's looking super good for them so far, cleaning up these remaining players. Only Ams behind. That's a dominating mid. Yeah, and Ams is now looking in to get the kill onto Pappy. He might do it, but good job of Swift to clean him up at the end there. It was a nice mid uh, from Swift. It looked like after the early damage, um, Lucas was aware that Phil had rotated through Saw, and that's where the rest of the ascent combo were. So Swift made the call to counter bomb where his rotation was coming out. Then they all got onto the left hand side before ascent could get up their right. Uh, so they managed to take the aggression to them and it just put Connor in a really bad position so he wasn't able to help his team and heal very much. So in the end they won I think mainly because of the, the early frags and the heals but going into this they've got a 60% uber advantage and they'll be ready to push last now. They will be, looks like top right where they're going to be going through. Ubers will get used, they've got a gun and a heavy to deal with. Gun gets dealt with fairly quick, he's still sticking to walk points of scruff. That's some difficulty playing it but... There's some decent positioning on the top right. It does look like they're going to play for a slightly later fight. Soldiers are in to try and get some damage on this medic, but they're losing a lot of players, and it's going to be Lucas and Seeds having to run away there. But these scouts still on the chase. Pipes from Lucas coming out just about saving his medic, but not for long, because Freddy comes in with a follower. Yeah, and that will be the last of the players dying for Swift. Scruff just, Scruff just spawning now. Everyone else from Ascent is moving forward. So they've got a 70% uber advantage, and Seeds isn't even up yet. Uh, there's still two players left and no heals for the Swift players on mid, so if Ascent can walk in here and just keep their wits about them, they should be under no threat and they can keep pushing up their medic position. Gink is actually in the forward spawn and he's got a deep sightline onto the choke. It looks like he's gonna begin to get shut down after getting Dr. Phil. Ooh, a wave Ooh, of Ascent deaths coming Lord. in now. Yeah, that's absolutely disastrous for Ascent and Scruff is actually just immediately on it. He hears the call, he's taking this 1v1 versus Ams. So very nearly wins it, but Ams will just about prevail with the heals. But, oh my Ooh. lord, he's direct from Tappy, okay. Chewing Tappy. Ams straight out of the sky. Yeah, just asserting his dominance on that Spire, he doesn't care about the uber advantage. He saw that Connor was running out, and one scout in his face is, is not going to be much to deter Pappy. So right now they do have, as we discussed in that pregame, we do have Gink on the sniper and we've got two scouts. So Swift in a kind of different position now. Um, when it comes into even uber stalemates, Normally, when you have a sniper and off class, you do have two soldiers, so you can have people um, watching the the main area and the flank with spam, as well as the traps from the demo. But 
I think a lot rests on how Pappy decides to play around uh, his team in this situation because if Gink gets a pick or if opportunities open up, Pappy needs to be quick to uh, pull the trigger. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like he's got that freedom of being the only soldier, but he's also got a lot of responsibility because everything a soldier has to do has to be just on him. So we're peeking and prodding to this little window in the middle to try and get a sight of uh, exactly how a scent are going to be holding. But as of right now, Swift is just taking a moment just to see whether anyone's going to overextend on the side of a scent. Left hand side is where Geek's going to be peeking first, charging up a shot nice and slow. That's in a little bit of danger here. Yep, he's going to get done now. So this left side now really, really open. It's still a gun to deal with in terms of anyone jumping in deep, but oh my lord, another one wow. comes out from Gig. That's both soldiers down from the side of Ascent, and this left-hand side is where they're going to start walking in here. This is so good. Lordy lord, I mean, they will end up losing Lucas. The Uber does come out. It is going to get traded a little bit. Ams is going to be desperately trying to trail away a little bit. There's no gun. This repush could be on the side of Swift, but Ams is making it all happen for his team. Taking down Gink as well, and for the rest of this damage... I mean, Classy's lucky to get out there, and I feel like Swift just has to move back. They've got to move back to second here. Yeah, and Ascent are going to be making moves. It's charge led by Amps Credu. Still moving up on the right-hand side as well, actually. They've isolated Pappy. He's going very weak, but Silentis goes down to Classy. Nice trade back there. So much damage on the Swift players, and they're still trying to contest this. They actually get the pick on Drac in the back lanes, and that might change the tides of this fight. Phil gets caught by Stickies from Lucas. It's just Credu left alive in second, and he's going to go down. Now it's only Connor and Amps left alive. Spawner's coming in four seconds. I don't know if it'll be enough, he goes. I really don't think so. They're going to get players towards point. Nothing much for Connor to do. That's going to be first round going to Swift. And these refights are looking incredible for Swift. Yeah, they did a really good job of baiting them out there. I mean, they had a couple early deaths when they were backing out of that last, but the spawn wave came in just in time, and Ascent were just going a bit too further, uh, a bit further forward than what they could have afforded to do, especially after Drac went behind and got killed. Uh, they were a bit slow to back out, but in the end, it was just a really good decision from Swift to draw them out there and win the fight. Swift wasting, uh, wasting no time on this mid. Both soldiers going to be going in, and oh my lord, Bill's getting shot out the sky. This crazy sniper just only comes into action, so. It will be a 5v5, but he's going to start hitting these shots, otherwise it will be nothing but a hindrance for his team. The rest of us, Swift though, they seem to be really, really disjointed. Salenta is bombing in and getting all the space he needs here, so 3v3. Salenta is losing his life though, Connor's getting caught towards point one rocket. Very slowly a second rocket will come in, and yeah, Condog's going to be losing his life all on Credo. I mean, he's full health, but realistically... How much can one lowly sniper do? I mean, at least one soldier's gonna be going down here. Lucas as well, super weak. Crady's taking a second now. And Scruff's actually behind and gets the pick onto Phil. He's gonna maybe look to go forward, but Credu is watching back in that choke. Credu single-handedly doing so much to shut down so many aggressors onto him. That man on Sniper is scary. But it looks like a center gonna come in and try and contest this a little bit. There's a fight going on uh, between Drac and Scruff, but they are going to both backpedal away from that one. A center giving up the mid-cap to Swift, who are now on about a 40% uber advantage. Uh, Credu spawning now for Ascent should be able to meet them on second, but the Uber is going to be close for Swift. Do they decide to use a sm uh, not a great advantage like this and go into second? Uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out here. I feel like in this situation they can get a lot of space towards this left-hand side, and I think ideally they're going to look to try and get through this without using, but no, they disagree entirely. They're going to be going deep, Ooh. and these flags are insane! That's absolutely ridiculous. They get three there, including Phil, and that's all important. Right now, Condor doesn't have anyone to heal at all, so... As much as players are trying to contest, he's going to be losing his life on this top left as well. Sil! Salentas and Drac! Sil picking up two frags on second, drawing Sif behind, and then bombs in onto Connor. Gets a nice juggle rocket and the airshot to follow up. Sil with a crazy play there, just single-handedly shutting down the offense from Swift. Uh, now, Connor dead, Seed's dead as well. It's going to be a bit of a messy fight on second. Amps is taking the charge in, but gets focus fired down. Now, uh, Credu and Phil are kind of committed, but they're separate. Credu gets one. Phil co comes in and gets the second. Lucas is going to be on his own on Cafe, and that's an opening for Ascent to walk in here. Seeds quite far back. Lucas weak on the mid, and they're definitely going to try and make something work here going in through Cafe. I mean, it feels like the second the thing started to go well for Swift there, I mean, just the raw DM power of these soldiers are coming into it. Speaking of which, he's going to be bombing in, getting a lot of damage, but no frags to his name. Slent is even going to live off of all this, and... Oh, that's a crispy little pipe from Lucas. It does look like Swift's going to have to be moving out. The soldier jumping deep from Pappy, but I think that can really be done. When you've got a 185 AMS, I mean, how much can you really live here? It's all going to be on seeds now to try and escape with his life so far away from anyone else. Only got a uh, Gink going to be sporting now, so they will be getting this Uber up just in time for second if they can move forward quickly. 
with these spawners, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a risk. Does it like they're gonna yeah. jump towards the last hit? I think the safer option, just because they didn't have the territory on second already at the choke points, would be soon locked down by the assigned players. The safer option is just to wait for the Uber on last. Use the time that you have uh, to build up your off classes on last while they're still walking into lobby. So just the safer option here. But I don't know, I, I kind of get the feeling that Ascent are going to look to get these Ubers out of the way kind of early uh, and not waste too much time going for sacks. Uh, but it looks like Drac is actually gearing up to do something here. We do have a uh, Classy on the Engineer and a Pyro with him on the defense. No soldiers from the set oh looking to come Lord. in now. I've they... not seen a denial that hard in a long time. Yeah, they got absolutely nothing. They couldn't even really get through the doorway there. So uh, unlucky, you know, you win some, you lose some. That's going to be a bit of a failed sack attempt there. And it's going to be Whip's opportunity to try and do something different here. Obviously, like you said, we've got a... We got a pyro, we got a sentry, so nothing particularly offensive in terms of our off classes. But you do have Pappy building up his battalion's backup, which, I mean, we've seen a lot from Pappy before. You know, building up these banners and you know using it to go for kind of force or go for kind of exchange and a repush kind of thing. I feel like uh, an option he thoroughly enjoys. We even have Gink actually on. Good lord, it's the buff banner. Ooh, I like to see this. We do have a set pressuring a little bit on their left hand side here. Phil and Amps looking to draw some attention over. They've not got a sniper or anything. This isn't a bait. I guess they're trying to just get some sort of uh, some sort of exchange going on. They're spamming down this sentry gun. So we'll hopefully see Classy switch off Engineer or rebuild it up. He is doing that now as the soldier comes in. Silent is getting denied again by the Pyro. They're playing the point though. Good cap time from Amps. Weak players from Swift can try to clean this up. Phil coming in as well. And it's looking like it's a 3v3 fight. Both teams have Uber. It all comes down to this. It's all going to come down to no. Classy just runs straight into Sticky, loses his life and sees. I mean, he can be invulnerable, but all by his lonesome, nothing much is going to happen there. What a weird little last push, but, you know, shout out to Ascent. Great aggression. They just focused down these peripheral players, and, I mean, Ubers didn't even matter. Yeah, and I was going to say earlier, it seems like the times where Swift are getting the edge are in the, the messier team fights, where they're baiting Ascent, you know, forward and backwards. But when the Ubers are in play, Ascent look quite strong, and they managed to get three picks early, and I, I don't know, I guess Seeds just wasn't with anyone or comfortable enough to use that Uber. In any case, going into this mid now, we've got some early damage onto Lucas. Big bomb in from Sil and Drac. They're going to take the fight to the Swift scouts. They're not getting much done for their work. They're splitting up a few of the players, but Ascent are taking over at the point. Connor goes weak. Gink is just going to get cleaned up now by Amps, surely, and it looks like Seeds and Pappy are going to be backing out uh, to last. They knew they didn't really have much uh, much to say on that mid and that they just need to cut their losses here, so they're going to be backing out second, will go to Ascent, uh, and we're still in an even Uber situation more or less, so we're going to gear up for another position on last. Maybe Ascent can replicate what they did on that last offense uh, into Swift last point, and then maybe they can get another round on the board here, but we'll see, because the off-classing has been pretty decent from uh, Swift thus far. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the that, that last little kind of weird situation, it all comes down to a little bit of kind of unpreparedness. I would imagine at this point, Swift are going to be hyper aware. They're not going to want to let that happen again, because frankly, from their point of view, that's kind of throwing things away. So, same kind of position as before, like you said, it's going to be Pyro Gun on the side of Swift. But now, I said, don't have to worry quite as much. They're playing with an equal kind of um, round score. So it's not like they, you know, that they're feeling like they're playing from behind, like they've got to make something happen. They can peak and prod and take things just a little bit slower. Yeah, there's still 18 minutes left in this. It's 1-1. Uh, Drac is looking to move towards Shutter now. I think they're going to try and spam down this gun again. The Pyro's doing a good job of denying that spam. So I said they're going to need to change up something in the playbook here. Um, we do... I was going to check actually if there was any banners in play. It looks like both Swift Soldiers have switched off and they are running the gunboats right now. More sentry spam, this time it does work out, so Classy is going to have to build up another one uh, and prepare it, and it looks like the scouts are looking for an Uber in from the right hand side. Yeah, they're going to be walking in, Uber's going to get used really early for a set, they're getting some decent damage, but Seeds milking so much, he just only uses his now, the rest set players are trying to jump in, trying to make something happen, Slenters and Drac playing around point, but they should be losing their life here, these rockets so close on Seeds, but just not quite, and it's going to be just Phil trying to escape on second, I mean... That seemed much, much more confident from Swift there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, it, it's risky uh, going for committing with the early pop on the Uber with two scouts into logjam last. So you're not really having too much to deal with, uh, like the pyro, if he can play around a corner. But I don't know. It, it was a lot to commit on from one pick. Uh, in any case, Swift are looking to come in and take this Uber advantage uh, into mid. Ascent are coming in with some counter aggression. They get gink for their efforts and they'll get classy as well. Now, if Lucas can put out some damage, he can maybe oh, shut this down. Damage! 
This is absolutely ridiculous from Ascent. They're beasting forward. They're getting so much done. It is Seeds and Pappy. Seeds getting so close on his Uber, but honestly, I mean, at this point, the scouts could just keep on going. It's a serious risk, but thankfully, they'll just about call off the dogs for just a moment. Seeds will be getting his Uber. And yeah, it's about a 40% advantage, but by the time all the spawners come in and by the time, you know, they get out to second, it's going to really be barely anything. I can't imagine Drift are going to yeah. push off this where they didn't push before. It did look like Pappy was kind of thinking about contesting second with that uber advantage, but he thought better of it, realizing that a few of his players were still to spawn. Interestingly, now we do have Silentis on the spy, so he's going to be the playmaker in this situation. It's good. I like when teams off-class proactively rather than waiting till the chance they get to sack. Um, it kind of throws a bit of a spanner in the works, so hopefully Swift are now expecting another sack. Uh, and if Ascent can mask it a little bit, uh, then they should be none the wiser for the spy place. So we're just creeping onto point right now, getting in position. Now Scruff is kind of aware of it, they are spy checking a little bit. Ascent are the they aren't really doing anything to suggest that they're sacking or doing anything, so it's kind of not hiding anything for the spy very well. No, so it, it, it's a little bit kind of telegraph, but at this point, you know, with Silencio's position, I mean, they can play like here for a good couple of minutes, get the rest of Swift super paranoid that they don't really know what's going on. I think Amzo, Amzo's going to start killing some of these stickers on point. Decoak on point, it's going to be Drak following up soon after, but there's a pirate there's a gun, not a lot he can do, he's going to be losing his life as well. The rest of the sense has got to back up now, so the proactive, uh, off-classing, proactive kind of moves got to be firmly in the position of Swift at this point. I've seen a lot of them so far in terms of trying to make things happen out of last, but... I mean, this is the time. Yeah, and this was the position that Swift were in uh, when they got their round on the board, was just kind of not really getting good effort into last and baiting them into a, a favourable fight on second, uh, but it looks like Swift aren't going to bite. Um, they have switched up for their own spy. It looks like Scruff is just spy checking for the time being, and we'll go back to Pyrosol. Uh, Swift quite content to just stay on last here and keep the hold. Their defense has been good thus far. They have shut down a lot of things and looked good pushing out into second. But the question now really is just how do Ascent alter their approach? They do have the option of the Credu Sniper. They've got two of the best soldiers at sacking uh, in the world, so it's, it's really up to them and to try and get a foothold in the door here to secure their second round. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard regardless. We see where Class has moved his gun up to, so it's uh, much, much more difficult to spam other than lower. And Bam is very nearly using his life there, so they're a little bit aware of that gun, but it does seem like this hold has stumped them just for the time being. Like I said, you know, we do have the option of uh, Freddy sniping. I feel like they might just send someone in for a sack and just kind of uh, go for a commit and just hold the door open or something. Because right now, this peeking and prodding getting a great deal done for us the thing that's interesting though is Swift aren't, uh, I don't think they're too committing to individual positions. As I say this, the scouts are coming in, Connor pops the Uber, they get the pick onto Pappy, but Seeds is going to have his counter pop. Connor might get juggled here, there's two players of Ascent getting pressured in main as Sil is stuck on last, gets the pick onto Gink, will be jumping over a sentry right now. Manages to keep himself alive, get some damage and control on the right hand side. This is looking good for Ascent, there's no one to contest the point. And they actually get that round. How did Silentus just jump into a sentry in a pyro and he lived? This man's a machine! That was insane! <laughs> He's calculated. He knew that the angle and speed he was jumping over the sentry it still needed to be uh, re-locking onto him. And he managed to get behind and break the line of sight on that little block of the left-hand side of the last. So, really intelligent, very fine play from Sil that manages to create an opening for his team to win it there. I mean, yeah, move, move aside, Gully Watch, Lockdown, apparently it's just Silentus' map, so... Going to be our fourth mid of the game. 2 1 for a set now. Finally in the driver's seat. Going to be moving towards this left hand side. Happy trying to get in onto Condog, but such a good serve from Condog. He's super weak, but just no one can get to him at this point. Now he's got towards his pack. It's only these three players for Swift, both Scout and Medic, running towards Choker. They've split apart just a little bit, but Crazy doesn't care whatsoever. He's just absolutely surging forward. I feel like they're just about calling him back. Credu, chill, dude. We've got the round advantage. Yeah. We've got Ubers. We can play a little bit slow, wait for our healers and. Maybe go off some of the positioning, which they should be able to buy on second as long as Cementus can keep himself alive and get some damage on these scouts. Yeah, the Swift players are meeting up with their medic and scouts now. Sil in a kind of precarious position. Scruff trying to take the fight to him, but gets isolated, kind of overcommitted there. And it's going to be the same for Classy. So now Lucas and Seeds are going to meet up with Pappy on that top left. But Lucas is going to get caught as well. Pappy is so weak. Seeds doesn't have anyone to use this uber onto so he's just gonna have to back out connor under no threat this is a huge advantage for ascent they're taking amps and connor already in on the left hand side of the last this could be a massive uber for ascent yeah it's absolutely disastrous in terms of swift's hold only now does condor finally use his uber but he drops too Salentis and amps both going down phil now as well he's gonna get picked up right at the end so massive mistakes here from ascent and 
particularly, that's just, I mean, that's a rough Uber. It was looking so good up until your whole team just dies. Well, Kredu picking up big kills, uh, managing to get some kind of silver lining here, but uh, Swift will definitely be able to be moving out. Drac is in the back lines, actually. He gets a rocket onto Seeds, can't quite connect the second. Pappy will clean him up. And yeah, a bit of a messy fight there. I think the mistake that Ascent made was really getting a bit too eager, running forward with only one scout and not many, uh, anyone else really to support him during the Uber. So when he's in the middle of a last with three uh, Swift players around him, he's not going to be able to do much. Uh, so a bit... Bit of jumping the gun there from Amps and Connor, but they can surely correct that mistake for the next time, as there is about a 60% Uber advantage for Swift, and they're looking to move this in from this whole area with Lucas and Seeds. Yeah, so they're playing towards us, Choke, and you see how much damage they're taking. I mean, they're trying to play it super, super slow with Seeds, which, you know, you appreciate, but all that happens is they take so much damage, they lose their demo before anything happens. Gink as well, so this is a two-player trading a piece, but an Uber's been used here as well, so... I mean, it does look like a set aren't really going to be able to contest this mid, but in terms of, you know, Ooh. ensuring the other team uses that Uber and... Ooh, Salenta's actually dying late. Maybe this could uh, make all the difference here in terms of pushing forward. Yeah, it was a really nice rocket from Pappy. Just uh, puts a bit more splash underneath Sil's rocket jump, so it sends him too high up, and he gets caught by the skybox over the choke. So uh, very, very carefully placed rocket from Pappy. If that was different, then I think Sil would have gotten that. In any case, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It should slow down Ascent a little bit now that Sil and Drac are kind of on the back lines and not with the rest of the team. But they are going to be looking to take this Uber forward, even though they've only got a 15% advantage. I think this is a bit risky for Ascent. Oh, with these soldiers, they're sort of going to jump behind and they're just going to shoot Drac out of the sky and fill as well. So much damage being dealt. These swift soldiers are making an absolute mess of things. But apart from... Not for Salentas, apparently, is he? Hits two crispy rockets and, I mean, I don't know how he saved that position, but he actually does for his team. Suddenly it's a four versus three now. Going to be looking to be trading some Ubers towards point. Both teams using about equal times, but fairly equal flashing as well. So it's all going to be about this position. It's all going to be about how much damage they can deal on these players towards Choke and whether they allow Swift to start walking back through. I mean, Lucas, Lucas. he seems like he wants to. Gets a nice pipe that actually gives them a chance to defend this here. Pappy, ooh, he's gonna get taken down by Drac. Nice aggression from the English soldier. Ascent looking to back up now and defend the aggressive players of Swift, but they are getting split apart. Connor is gonna be stuck against Lucas. He manages to make it out and back to Phil. Both of them doing a good job, but Lucas is on the chase, gets one sticky. Connor's gonna be weak, and there is a loose scruff running around on the right-hand side. He does get spotted and might have to back up. As Swift are still to cap this here, they're a bit far forward, and Ascent are getting some players spawned, so they might be able to contest this if they can get a frag, uh, but it looks like it's just going to reset back. Credu still to come alive. Uh, Swift now looking to move forwards towards the choke and keep the momentum going, but that was not the strongest of showings on mid. They managed to edge it out. Though. They do, so now it's going to be looking to be a tiny little advantage for Swift. They are actually moving a lot towards this left-hand side. They're going to try and use this. It's still 86% for Connor. He's trying to heal some of these players, but in that time, two's got to be lost already. Still 95% playing on this high ground. So many players have been lost from Ascent, and this is going to be a, a full commit Uber here for Ams and Drac. I mean, this positioning being taken, it's, it's decent. They're getting a couple of frags, but you see they're so split apart. They're so far away from any sign of safety, and it's going to be looking like Connor's going to be losing his life. Freddy trying to make the, sorry, Ams trying to make the best out of a bad situation, but he's just not going to hit those shots today. So Salentes and Phil going to be the only guys on last, and another four seconds before anyone comes up for a cent. It can be a fast play from Swift, but they seem yeah. to not want to go for it just yet, playing this advantage. Yeah, Lucas says it was actually quite far forward, not helping his team on second and getting pressure onto last early, and he looks like he's trying to keep that up. I think they're aware of their 50% Uber advantage show, and they're probably just going to play to that at this point, but I want to give credit to Scruff, Pappy, and Seeds on that uh, second fight, because they did a great job of knowing their roles. Pappy jumped away to the side and baited a couple people from Ascent to chase him, and managed to hold them off and do damage, while Scruff escorted Seeds out to safety. They're coming in with the Uber now, Lucas and Scruff leading the charge. Gink is going to be the first death, though. Still gets a uh, Another frag on the lower right, very weak players from Ascent, three of them within uh, just a few points of HP, and it looks like th those frags are going to shut down the swift aggression. Lucas is going to be in a 1v1 with Credu, Credu's going to win that one as Pappy escorts Seeds out here, but they went different ways. Uh, the scout oh, is on the chase, I believe this is Credu, he's right behind Seeds, gets some good damage, not quite enough to seal the deal, 18 HP as Seeds makes it round that corner, but good chase from Credu going into mid here. It was good, and the damage forward is going to be so, so significant. Gink sniper and spawn, he's going to have to hit a shot, otherwise there's going to be no chance at all that his team is going to be able to keep a hold of this. He's still playing in there. They did take down Phil there, so these stickies, this air is not going to be available for a set, but 
They're just taking it through sheer force of, you know, their scouts, really. Amps and Credit picking up one each for them. Finally, Gink will be back spawning. So, still an Uber on the side of Ascent, but they still got a caster point. You know, they've got to take things a little bit slower just for a moment, and this will give Swift just enough time to get their own Uber. Pappy and Lucas can be moving through trying to make something happen. Gink's flank is working really, really well, picking up drag there, so. Spreading Ubers, a little bit of flashing on the side of the juggle. Oh my lord, this juggle onto Connor. There's no way he lives through here, right? There's actually no way he's surfing it. He's playing so close, but what a pipe. Okay, eventually we will be getting it. But with all that distraction, Salentis gets to bomb in for free and take down Seed. So this is turning into a super scrappy fight, but there's no way Ascent gets out of this positively. Yeah, it no, looks like Credu's going to be the last one stuck on the mid. Uh, Drax, the spawner. Credu's buying a lot of time for his spawners here. Swift should really just be playing this from the capture point so that they can ensure that they get the cap. As it looks, uh, the spawners are going to favor Ascent, so they're going to be in a position to come back as Seeds did die. Uh, it was a great decision, I think, for Swift to recontest that mid, especially when Phil was dead and they had the demo advantage. Lucas put out the damage and managed to juggle corner, but because Seeds died and no one was there to protect them uh, as they were backing out, they're not going to be able to contest this too well. And it looks like Ascent are taking the fight to them. Credu and Drac combining very well on the right to get the first pick as they just slowly bully them out at this point. Classy's in behind though, gets onto corner. Can he get the last shot? He goes so weak. Pappy potentially going to try and clean up that frag, but they are two down swift and just going to have to back up. Classy really trying to clutch at straws. Almost manages to get the magic shot onto corner, but not quite. It is unfortunate, but at the same time, it almost means there's no real chance of contesting a mid and with this kind of all these players bleeding on the side of Swift. It just seems to be kind of, you know, one mistake after another. So they'll be losing control of second now. And honestly, there's even a position to get one of these soldiers in super deep before there's too much of a last hole going up. Am is moving towards point. He knows there's no sticky there. And they're busting through left hand side, trading Ubers. Am's playing on point already. A lot of time being there. Both soldiers from Sukkin have to drop down the point. So if they can get at least one frag here, yep, it's looking good. The repush is on. Everything's crumbling for Swift, and that's going to be a third round for us then. Wonderful push there. They had barely any uber advantage, but the key thing was that Lucas had a late death on second. They knew there was no forward stickies. They knew that Swift were already on the retreat, and they didn't have much of a time to set up off classes on last. So even though they didn't have an uber advantage, that was a perfect example of pushing a, a player pick, because they got so much damage to the point where by the time Lucas was spawning, there wasn't really any specific place that he could focus his spam and damage towards that could help his team, really. So really well played from Ascent, uh, from the team perspective. Phil getting early pressure now from Happy, but I'll uh, let you take it away for the rest of this mid. So it does look like the first two frags are going to go the way of Ascent. So Swift just trying to get out, trying to just at least keep their lives here. It's already getting to the point where 4 minutes 20, there's not a great deal of time for them to come back into this game. These deep bombs from Phil and both of his soldiers, they're going to get the damage. Drax still moving forward. Trying to make something happen, but I mean, at this point, it is four minutes, ten seconds to go. Two rounds are needed from Swift to even equalize at this point. So, yeah. I mean, there could be no more of these opportunities where Swift just chill on last with a gun and a pyro and, you know, hope that Ascent make mistakes because, you know, for all, for all they know, Ascent could just be planning on sitting here in second until the game's over. Yeah, that was crazy aggression after the mid there from Ascent. They dived all their players through, didn't bother leaving anyone to cap, but Swift, no now the clock is against them and they are looking to make moves walking out here lucas on his own on the left there's a scout in his face and the uber's gonna, gonna, gonna come in classy and lucas both going down still is the trade frag and now the uber comes out for sweet uh scruff and seeds drax potentially going to be going to last but if scruff can get frags here it might not matter gets the first on to fill uh credit and connor are going to be looking to contest this because they know drax coming back in frags can go either way here seeds in the face of credit goes down Scruff picks up Drac, but it looks like they're going to have to be backing out. Connor with a nice surf to get away. Uh, she should preserve that uber advantage, but Gink is in his face and manages to get the frag. So it is just about looking okay. Crowd and Scruff taking a little 1v1 here with the help of Salentes now. Not that he even needs it, so... I mean, literally at this point, everything has to start going perfectly for Swift here. I believe Lucas will pick up Credu, so it's going to prevent Ascent from moving fully, you know, to stop Salentis from taking too much position towards point. So, I feel like at this point, for Swift, they have no choice but to just kind of group up. They're moving through this choke point. They're going to look to try and get some control over point, but Ascent just don't want to make it easy for them. They've got both soldiers, a demo, a scout, and with Credu spawning as well. I mean, there's every chance that they repush, but there's every chance that they just start trying to play safe. They get it, you know, it looks like they're opting to get a firm hold on second and just make things difficult. Keep ticking that clock down. Yeah, definitely the safer option, especially when your powerhouse duo Amps and uh, Credu were not alive to contest that mid. Both Sassan Soldier's gonna dive in for Gink, but he's doing a good job of slowing them down. 
creates the opening on the left hand side for the Swift team to run in. Classy will get the trade frags on the soldiers. So positive exchange for Swift. They've still got a tiny advantage again. If they can use that player advantage like Ascent did last time, then it could go work to great effect because there's no soldiers on last right now. Looks like they're going to be taking this Uber in. Soldier spawning now. The pop is going to be late here for Seeds. Uh, first actually corner pops. Seeds is milking this like a farmer, but he gets the late pop. This is a great looking opportunity for Swift if the rest of the team can come in, but the Credu Heavy is out, putting out so much damage. Not a great position for uh, Swift. They're all kind of collapsing in the same place, but Class is picking up frags left, right, and center. There's two on last. Can they pull it out? It's just Lucas to clutch. He could definitely do this. Pappy's coming in now with the heals. This looks like a Swift round if he can get the time, and yes! Happy getting the second round on the board. One minute 30 left. This is definitely possible, and especially if they can keep their momentum going equally, this could be a 3-3 affair. It's super, super important that they go for a nice dominating mid here, you know. Obviously, ideally, they get control of mid, but they take down Condog because with, you know, 1 minute 15 on the clock, it's going to be all about these Ubers and how slow can Ascent make this game go from here on out because right now, that, that has to surely be their only goal, so... Lucas, he's got the mem again. Some nice early damage towards Phil. Not going to mean much after the pack, but the positioning has been taken. So, now both of these Swift Scouts moving towards point. They're going to be going forward. And this damage is decent. Salentis is bombed, though, as always, doing just so, so much damage. He takes down even a second one before he dies. And, I mean, the frags, the positioning, everything's going the way of a scent on this mid. It's going to be just seeds living. And with 40 seconds to go, I mean, you'd need some kind of miracle here. And even the players are recognizing it themselves. They're calling it yeah. GG on this map. I mean, <laughs> testament to Salentis. Every time so far this match, uh, he has been needed from his team to go big. He's going big. And he made so much space with that bomb. Big advantage now coming in for Ascent as they're going to be pushing off that momentum from mid. Trade frag coming in onto Draco. That's going to be the round to seal the deal. It wasn't anyone able to contest point. Uh, so well played from Ascent. That would be 4-2 for map one as we go into process. But Swift will definitely be feeling like they have a, a game that they can win here. They, they gave the fight to Ascent on Logjam. Uh, a map that they're not as familiar with and had worse results in week four on. So I think they're definitely capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this end. Yeah, I think, you know, realistically, it ended up 4-2, but it was effectively 3-2, and then Swift just had no choice but to kind of, you know, try and try and full commit on this mid. So in that situation, it isn't like they have no right to be in that server, you know, no, nothing along those lines. You know, these, these fights were good and only a couple little situations. I mean, Swift even had the opportunities to push on last and just didn't quite um, convert it. So... You know, definitely really interesting to see how they take this forward on the process. I do believe you've got some logs to look at and uh Oh good lord, that is Credu 41 for 14. Wow. That's ridiculous, right? That's actually just insane. That's that's not how the game's supposed to work. I mean we know Scout's <laughs> overpowered, but 41 frags? That's that's more than I I don't even know. I mean, look if looking at Drac and Phil, they, they didn't have very particularly high fragging games. Drac, unfortunately, 7 for 28. Uh, with 14 air shots, though, to give him credit where credit is due. But, I mean, if you're looking at the kills, that's that's Credu. That's Credu and Amps all over, but, I mean, mostly Credu. Uh, top damaging as well on the server. 9.5k, 330 DPM. Uh, not even that much of it coming from Sniper, as he has known to do in the past. So Credu just... Showing us a masterclass on Scout today, coming up with key frags, and really, I I do think whereas the stats don't show it being as uh, as impactful as perhaps Credu's stats look, Salentis made a massive difference throughout that fight, uh, that I, map rather. Yeah, I really think so. I mean, it, it wasn't just the individual frags; it was the context of everything. You know, it it just seemed to be that whenever Salentis would bomb, there there was almost never one of those bombs where you jump in and maybe, you know, you hit a rocket and then you're just instantly dead. It, it never happened. His timing was on it. Um, you know, he'd get into those positions, which just, you know, it, it brought all those opportunities for his team to start moving cross point and for players like Credu to get in that comfortable position where they're 185, they can see the players in front of them and they can just focus on getting the damage, getting the frags. I mean, we did talk about a, a Lucas versus Phil game in terms of um uh, just before the game went live. And honestly, looking at this, you would give, in terms of DM, in terms of, you know, pure fragging potential, Lucas kind of, you know, really was hitting it that game, but it didn't... I mean, we, we had some decent fights. We had some decent kind of, you know, focus fire, some decent kind of contests for Swift where it was looking okay. At the same time, it, it, it felt like 
Lucas was getting just denied a little bit too much in some of these later fights. I feel like if they could have, I don't know, done things slightly differently and Lucas could have just stayed alive a little bit longer, got himself a slightly more aggressive position because early on in the mids, he was he, he was dominating. Just a little bit oh, more yeah. of that and maybe things would have been different. Honestly, I think the big difference between these two teams, um, anytime it looks like there's a team fight going on and people are able to isolate people, adjust, like, you know, cause a bit of chaos in positioning and make it a bit more of 1v1 or 1v2 or 2v2, 2v1, 2v3, you know, small kind of fights. It seems like that's where Ascent players shine because they have such individual, individually capable uh, players with such strong DM, uh, yeah, such good uh, situational awareness that that's where I think they, they have their advantage. But actually in the team fights where it's a bit more, you know, uh, upwards of four players from each team fighting i think swift have better focus fire at least it seems to be the case tonight because they've been winning a lot of team fights and pulling ascent into positions where their players are over committing and it works out favorably for swift so at the times in which i think lucas has been really the most impactful is when they're able to get those ubers out of the way so ascent can't rely on you know amps or credu or drac or sill having big games uh, or big fights taking in ubers taking in putting out damage uh, when they can keep it a bit messier and a bit about how the teams play around their medics, I feel like that's where the heals on Lucas really shines because he know he doesn't need to worry about an Uber. Uh, he can just take heals and he can put out damage. And in so many of the situations, he gets the key frags and the key damage to make a difference and turn it into Swift's favor. So if Lucas can keep that up and if Swift can keep it a bit more uh, oriented around team fights, I think they've definitely got a chance here. I mean, you you talk about heals, you talk about Ubers and, uh, and everything just there. I mean, just to go back to the stats for a minute... I mean, Seeds had less deaths than Connor. He had more assists. He had more frags himself. Uh, he had four more Ubers over the course of that game. And even still, Ascent were looking to be dominating the majority of situations, you know? There, there, there were these refights where things were looking good, but, you know, above 50% of the time, Ascent seemed to be in this kind of controlling position. And it seemed like they didn't, they didn't need more Ubers. They didn't, well, they didn't actually even need more frags in the end. It was just converting those really, really key moments. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe, maybe at this point, going into process, Swift just have to start looking at some of these individual players and some of these individual plays from a set themselves and be like, okay, the theory of what we're doing makes sense, but we need to make sure this one guy is dead or these two guys yeah. are dead, and then we can focus on everything else. Absolutely, because if you think about that game, for Ascent, you know, there was players that played well and players that looked a bit shakier. So, Credu looked great, Sill looked great, Phil looked a bit shakier, Drac didn't have quite the same impact that he usually does. But when you look at Swift, looking at those names, every single player contributed significant moments to their team. No one really stood out. Scruff had some big moments, Classy, Gink obviously on the sniper, uh, Papi playing a very stable soldier, Lucas with the damage, and Seeds being, you know, one of the hardest medics to kill. So, it... I feel like all the, it's just as you're saying, Swift need to do a better job of noticing who's having impact for Ascent, uh, which players are capitalizing on the openings that Swift are creating, and they need to shut down those players. They need to recognize the Sill Bomb, stop him from getting any damage. They need to shut down the Credu Sniper. They need to not put Connor in positions where he can heal and dodge like we know he's so capable of doing. And I think if they can shut down Ascent, then Ascent are going to crumble. And Ascent probably aren't going to be happy that that was as close as it was. So... If they can reach deep down and find something uh, to motivate themselves and push up, they could come out stronger than even on map one. So I think it's really up to Swift, as you're saying, to shut down those individuals, and I think they can definitely uh, get a good head start in this game. Yeah, well, this is going to be it. Going into map two of ETFDR Season 32, Week 5. This is Ascent EU versus Swift on our second and final map of the night on process. So this maybe we saw a couple little... Spies checking in spawn for any off passes, but it's going to be all six regular players here on this mid. King taking some decent position on the top right hand side, getting some nice info. He's bombing in as well. Phil's already deep, but he's not going to get anything really done. And it's going to be Salentas once again taking the real first initiation in terms of getting some damage, but all frags are getting traded at this point. Credit playing a little bit over aggressive towards top. He's going to be losing his life, and Hams and Connor's going to be Happy. moving towards a choke point. Oh my lord, Phil's so close to death, and this is such a good opportunity if Swift can just heal up a little bit, start moving through this choke. I mean, Happy's got the mammoth, so is Scruff, they're pushing so far forward. Phil has absolutely nowhere to be seen. His life is almost, you know, not even worth sending arrows for at this point, and aggression has been halted from Swift. 
Yeah, and that, that was a good example of what we were talking about. They got some of the early picks. Lucas did die to sail bombing him on point with a nice rocket, but they managed to take position and have just generally more players in the fight than Ascent did, and that's where Swift managed to play around each other as a team and uh, make it work. It, there has been a couple of instances so far, and that was one of them, where Lucas looks like he's going just a bit out of reach of his medic, just a bit ahead of his team, and Ascent are punishing him for it. So if he can keep that in check, and I feel like he's going to be doing much more... Uh, benefit than harm to Swift. Ascent Drac now peeking up into PC. Just trying to see, get maybe some information as uh, Swift are occupying sewers. No off classes from either team here. They're both trying to set up for a sack by the looks of things, but I'm not sure who's going to be able to get the upper hand. Well, and like I said, both teams, they're, they're getting this information. They're opening up this far left hand side, making sure that there's some control on the side of Swift towards the sewer, which is really important. Because then it means uh, Ascent have to look in so much wider of a, of a radius, you know, they've got to possibly expect something from Choke or from a far sewer door, or, you know, then suddenly you can maybe go for a PC play. It's just, you know, Swift allowing themselves some options, making Ascent have to think about things a little bit more. But you can see where Connor's positioned himself. He's so far back, it's going to be so, so difficult for people to jump deep. And I feel like at this point, Swift might be thinking, well... How much position can we take through this choke point? How far into grass can we get before Connor's going to start moving forward to actually heal the rest of his team? Yeah, it looks like neither team are really committing anything here. Connor, like you're saying, on that little spot, that's quite a nice spot for him to be on. Uh, Seeds actually is moving heals up into TC, so they may be trying to do something now as a team. Credu trying to take the fight to them. Pappy's going to shut him down, um, but not really much going on there. Lucas and Scruff are peeking the choke a little bit. But they're aware of everyone's position for Ascent. I'm pretty sure they saw all six players, so they know that there's no funny business going on. Drax's not in a hiding spot or on Spy. Uh, Soldier coming in now off Pappy, but he's just going to jump in to get info. Uh, potentially bait something out of the Ascent team. But it's not going to be much. I mean, both teams are basically just trading spam right now. This is going to look good for Lucas on his logs. But Gink is flying in on the Soldier. Gets one rocket off Connor. Ooh! Looks like he took a bit more damage there, but it wasn't quite... Uh, wasn't quite enough to get that that medic pick. Oh, that was nice and close there. And while he was jumping in, it was actually Creddy who was running back to make sure he's up on Sniper now. So peeking through Choke is going to be his first little opportunity. Taking down Lucas as well. No sticky through this Choke and Ams is immediately on it. Just walking through Choke, taking all this position while he knows there's no stickies to deny them. Looks like Gruff and Seed's going to be taking this trade, forcing Condor to split already. So... Not super, super good for them, but it's also not super bad. They're taking somehow this really good position towards the top of point. Getting so much damage on the Gink as well, so he's actually going to be the first death here. Pappy equalizes just a little bit, but I mean, they're missing so many players. And Scruff as well looks to be losing his life as he tries to get up. But actually, he's going to somehow dodge everything. Take down Salentis, and suddenly the sniper from the side of Credo, unless he's going to hit a headshot. Being a little bit of a detriment to his team really you see Kratos and Phil so so weak and in terms of momentum in terms of you know focusing what's important right now it's going to be Swift's time to Pappy. shine what an air shot from Pappy that was absolutely sick and they're just flooding through choke now asserting his dominance on his former teammate of uh, Connor Drax also in lower PC but he gets spotted really early Scruff and Lucas will be shutting that down Lucas getting the bottle frag to finish that off they've got 80 percent there's no heals for a sense so they're going to be diving forward into last Looking to go from lobby, I think a sniper shot would be the saving grace here for Ascent. But beyond that, there's not much that can be done. Heavy on the right hand side, he's gonna go, well, Phil's gonna go down the heavy back into spawn. Swift looking dominant here as they walk into last and take the first round of the board. That's such a good start for them, but the issue is for Swift at this point. This is the exact same as we saw on Logjam, you know? A nice, strong first round, you know? Winning mid, winning the round, getting one up in the first five minutes, but they need to keep a hold of this game. Last uh, last map, they didn't really seem to be able to do it, but this map, they've got to be thinking about things a little bit differently. They've got to be, you know, working out the flaws in their play and you know, really focus on uh, what they're going to need to do. Aggressive soldiers jumping towards Lucas, getting a lot of damage, but Crody's going to be sniping this mid. Are Swift aware of it? This is the question. They're getting some decent damage towards the left-hand side. Lucas trying to pound forward the damage, but he's losing his life. Phil now getting a little bit caught, especially with Gink on this flank as well. It is starting to look good for another Swift mid. Connor as well. 
losing his life is all on Ams and Drac, but Drac somehow makes it happen. Yeah, this isn't Drac's first radio. He knows uh, he knows that when there's the opportunity there, and if you turn away from him and leave your medic exposed for just two seconds, he's going to be there at the right time. Gets a great direct to shut down any surf that Siege was going to attempt, and then another one to follow up and secure that frag. Uh, Swift did a good job there of not being in Credu sightlines early on, getting him to look down that left-hand side of the mid as uh, Gink pogoed in and basically shut him down, but Scruff's not going to be able to do the same. Gink going down as well to fill a nice headshot from Credu as the center looking to move back into mid here with two picks now. Those two players from Swift are really kind of far out of position to be honest and that's going to mean that they're going to have to give up this mid and after that first round you'd hope they would have a, a bit more a bit more contest on that mid here and not make kind of careless mistakes. Hopefully they're not getting ahead oh, of themselves. Lucas. Oh my oh god Credu's peaking again doming seeds and now it's going to be this soldier for the side of Swift, I mean, they're having to play so far back. There's no real buffs on the side of Swift at all. You see how slow Ascent are playing. I mean, at this point, you've got to be terrified. Nowhere on second is safe against a Credu Sniper. Yeah, I mean, nowhere on anywhere in 5CP is really safe against a Credu Sniper because he's just that good. Pretty much the best sniper we've ever seen uh, in TF2. Uh, Luke is going to go down, and that's an opening here for Ascent. They've got an 80% uber advantage. No stickies on the point. They were able to use this really well on Logjam, and they've got an even bigger uber advantage this time. Oh my god. Credu's not stopping. The oh! Connor gets dropped by a flare from Classy. I mean, they now have to fight so much towards this point. I mean, Credu's still landing these shots, so... I don't know, this is getting so scrappy. The frags are coming in for the side of Swift. How are they possibly holding this? It's all on Ams now, trying to get onto Lucas. It's 1v1. Benny, any damage has been dealt to Ams at this point. There's still these stickies and these spawners are coming up now. Ginks just about getting in. Oh my god, Lucas is just so prepared to leave these stickies on point. He does not care what Ams is doing at all. Ams is this not taking any damage. This ridiculous. Finally. Ams. will air shot him and hold it. I had, my, I had my heart in my mouth there. Amps <laughs> making it look like he was going to pull that out. Lucas very disciplined and great little AD spam to avoid taking any damage from Amps. Or maybe Amps beefing his shots, call it what you will. But in any case, uh, this is going to be neck and neck even Ubers. That was looking so good for Ascent until Classy somehow, I, I couldn't even see it, but somehow he managed to get the flare frag onto Connor and drops his Uber after Credu gets another entry pick on the sniper. So that was, that was madness. Uh, but Credu is feeling confident on that sniper, so it looks like he's going to be moving towards Shutter, charging up a shot here. Gets a body shot on Pappy, so now he has been called. We'll probably be rotating through various sightlines uh, as this stalemate continues, but I mean, shout outs to Classy. It's like we were saying, so now now individuals from Swift stepping up, having those big moments to keep themselves in a comp uh, dominant position in this game. We'll be Cement is peaking just a little bit too much, trying to take some position for Credu, so... He'll be going down here and Scruff, I mean, the second he sees Credu stopping, he's like, alright boys, I'm going to pick up the rifle myself, start moving through one. He's going to win that little duel there, and Gink as well, from uh, some big old pipes from Phil. He's going to be losing his life, so we've got this forward gun, this forward hold position from the seeds, but it's going to be far right after position. My oh, lord, Ubers get used for a set, much, much later used for seeds, so... This map is not going to have a great deal of impact yet until the Reaper starts coming in. So the gun died there, and there's still a player down on the side of Swift. Drax going to be losing his life as well, though, and Ams drawing so many of them back. The Salentis bomb getting decent damage. It's all on players who are resuffering, so it's a really scrappy fight towards point. They're starting to get some time. You see these players from Swift, they're kind of playing super far apart, making sure none of them are taking the same damage, and it's just ultimately going to be a case of this is not enough damage being dealt by Ascent. This sniper, once again, you know, he's hitting the shots here and there, but when it comes to extended team fights, how much can he offer? Yeah, and as, I mean, even without credit, it probably would have gone the other way if he had the if he had the scout. Usually, he hits more shots than that in team fights on a sniper. But this is what I was talking about. It's in those team fights, and it's gonna work out for Swift. They've got really good focus fire. But now at the choke, actually, Amps is on spy. I don't know if they've spotted him. He's coming up behind Seas, and he gets the stab. It's gonna be great for Ascent. He's actually putting out some revolver damage as Sil is jumping back in to kill Gink in the back lines. They will be giving up that mid, but that's a decent uber advantage for Ascent. And maybe if they can get some frags here, they can come back to contest this. Oh, my. I was going to say, yeah, maybe that would happen off this uh, this great play from Swift Soldiers, but Dr. Pill there hitting a couple of his own, so he realizes things just a little bit now. And you see, Freddy's playing with confidence right now. He's making sure he's buffed, and he's just kind of walking through this choke point. As much as there's only three players on the side of Ascent, they're playing with the confidence to just kind of move forward. Freddy on this height, he's just absolutely just... There's nothing Pappy could really even do there. He's still even going towards Choke, trying to get some damage on Season. It's a little bit of just over-aggression there, especially with 
Rack dying as well, so Seals it. they try to make things happen. Oh god. Seal makes it happen. Really good rockets while he's flying through the air seeds. Not quite good enough to get that surf away. Connor's gonna be isolated now, uh, but Amps manages to lock off Scruff and prevent him from getting to his medic. So they're gonna be in a decent position here with that Uber advantage, especially after another late death from seeds. Uh, so now they just need to wait on second until they've got more players, but they will be looking to move in on mid very soon. Lucas has got a sticky trap on Sewers right now, and Gink is watching from PC, so they've got, you know, kind of avenues to keep Ascent in check, and he does get Credu, so that's an important frag for Lucas. They're still 80% down on the Uber, and I don't know if it'll be enough to help them defend this equally. Yeah, I mean, it is going to be this nice and early use here. These rockets! Oh, good for Salentis today. That 1-2... They're getting all this damage on Seeds as well. It's going to be so much damage forward, but these other players are not quite finishing up these frags. Really uncharacteristic for for the players of Ascent. It's actually just going to be Thumbs playing super, super far behind. Take this 1v1 with Gink. He'll be getting this frag at least, but I mean, how much more can he really do individually? A little bit of, um, I don't know, I feel like just one little uh, difference that could have made things so, so good for Ascent, but now it's going to be looking like it's going to start... Retaking second, you know, building up this uber advantage, start moving forward onto mid. Yeah, Ascent do have that feared credit sniper watching the choke from his own sewer. Uh, Scruff, Scruff uh, going a little bit into the sightline here, might get picked, but Credu going to be careful with that trigger discipline. Looks like Swift are moving in with that uber through PC now. Luke is going to be leading the charge as he bombs in here, but he doesn't get a good jump. No one from Ascent is really under threat here. Phil going to be backing out with the medic, still probably going to die on mid. Uh, Amps is just looking to run out right now, and I believe we have a pause in the middle of that. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but currently Swift are in a decent position with height on mid. Uh, but they have gone pretty weak kind of chasing in here, and Ascent are looking healthier than ever. But if they can get an opening with uh, with Credu taking a shot or perhaps a Drac Bomb, then I think they can, they can definitely contest this mid. I feel like they really can. You see, yeah, both Pappy so so weak and they're both in the same kind of position so honestly at this point it might be that Drac can kind of push forward and almost get to there so you know it is it is an uber advantage situation for Ascent it depends on how slow exactly they're going to want to play this and as always you know I feel like I feel like if they can get at least one frag here they'll start moving through towards choke and just you know start take some position and then play around that sniper we've not seen them do that a great deal so far they're more kind of letting Credi play a little bit solo um, but if they can just start moving slowly, uh, start take some position for Credu, and just let him buy them all the space in the world, force players to move faster, and um, yeah, start getting some more control over this mid. Obviously, this is about 17 minutes left to go. This is still Swift 1-0 up, so it's still going to be Swift in the driver's seat. It's going to be a cent, you know, being forced to try and make some things happen here. I'm going to desperately hope, I mean, we have just a few days ago in the... Uh, the big French derby we had about 30 minutes of pauses. I'm going to hope that won't happen today. Yeah, and you never know, this could even be a... Oh, well, thankfully, the unpause actually just like did that. just happen. So all you need to do is complain about it. And it looks like Ascent are going to be coming back in as my HUD is broken. So I'm not sure exactly how much Uber they have. Walking into the point, Credu gets the opening frag. Seeds is going to just be backing out here. They don't want to contest this, but they're losing quite a few players and they are still weak. Good pressure from Drac uh, as they are going to be making out here. Uh, just four left alive for Swift. Gink is actually in the back lines and it looks like uh, Ascent are going to have to come back for him. He almost makes it out. Nice little surf there, uh, but Ascent are going to be definitely walking in and uh, taking this mid. There is still a threat of a back cap because they got good time, but Connor is sitting on uh, about a 20% uber advantage, so it's probably not going to be enough, uh, especially that Sil is dead. So, or sorry, Gink is dead. So the opening now coming in from Ascent, but they're they're actually committing with this Uber. They're taking the trade in, uh, and it's not looking great for Swift. They've yeah, lost it's, two it's players already. Messy. Yeah, it, it's super messy. You see this kind of this kind of focus frags, these individual plays for Ascent. They're looking well. You see Phil move back towards Grass while his soldiers jump in, and there's so much damage raining down. It's going to be Drac picking up a super important frag towards Gink there, and it's going to be Seeds. Just about getting out with his life, so from that, the possible overextension from Credu. Looks like he should be dying here, but no, he doesn't care. He's hitting the meat. He might even get a second here. That's absolutely ridiculous. And there's going to be no Swift players up at all. It's going to be just Seed all by himself. That's going to be a 1 1. 
Yeah, nice little kill streak there from Credu asserting some some dominance there. And it looks like, yeah, that was, uh, I think, a tactical pause between rounds because that's when the chat just caught up there. So maybe a slight strategy adjustment from Swift there. They know they need points. They're fighting their hearts out here. There's 1-1. One, one. I'm not sure what the exact state is for playoffs right now, uh, considering they lost map one. In any case, though, they're going to be taking the fight to Ascent. Credu is on that sniper at the choke. They do have Sale moving to scout, actually, so only one soldier of track. They're playing a much more passive mid. Uh, Credu going a bit further forward to go for a deeper sightline, but Swift, the ball of Swift players, is looking good on the left-hand side. Pappy going to take a jump into choke, get some good damage out, and Sc Classy and Scruff are following up on this, so it's looking good for C. Uh, oh, no, Swift! What an absolute disaster! He walks out directly into Salentes, and between Arms and Salentes, it is absolutely decimating what's left of the Swift players. Scruff, though, trying to assert his dominance, being the scout main here. He still has to take Arms, though. Arms is full health. Surely there's no way. It will be an ascent mid, but, I mean, big mistakes are happening from Steve's. That seems super, super peculiar. Yeah, there must have been some kind of miscommunication going on there, because it was looking good, and then they were just in the face of scouts, so... Uh, maybe, maybe the the pause that they had, the communication was a bit, a bit too much information for them, and maybe they kind of forgot what they were doing a little bit because that seemed uncharacteristic of their otherwise pretty good performance. In any case, it's going to be a thirty percent uber advantage for Ascent, and they're looking to move early with it. Uh, we've already got the scout peeking in from that sewer door. Uh, no sniper in play, and they're looking to just drive push this. Oh my lord, Lucas trying to hard commit to holding this door. The rest of the team is going to come in to try and help him out, but. And he'll be losing his life, but trading for two somehow. Credit just gets in and takes down seeds. How does that even happen? They're so focused on this one doorway, and now somehow even Drag jumps in with his pain train. He's going to be starting a back up, and I mean, Swift players are far away. He might even solo cap this. Oh my god, Gink this time is going to work just out perfectly. About not enough in time, and they are going to clean up. There's no one to threaten the, the cap on last, so that will just be good for uh, the forward spawns for Ascent. Uh, they've got five of them now on mid, uh, but it's still slight uber advantage to seeds. Uh, so Swift are actually going to be looking to come back in here because there's 14 minutes on the board. They don't want to waste any time here at all, and they're looking to take this in. Credit doing so much damage to Lucas, but it looks like he's going to get cleaned up. Sale with the trade frag. There's so much damage at the choke. Frags can go either way here. Nice bow from Connor actually to pick up Lucas, and that's going to be the nail in the coffin for this push for Swift. They're going to have to be backing out here, but a center on the chase, he believe. They really are on the chase. You see how deep this soldier's going, getting some nice damage. Classy, no way he'll live here whatsoever. Gink and Seeds moved all the way through one. At least now, they have a moment just to relax, just for a second, and they have somehow managed to build themselves just a little bit of advantage, but Ascent doesn't care. They're moving so far forward, they're playing on the cap. This Uber's not quite going to be out on the side of Seeds just yet. 98%! He has to get this Uber, otherwise this may just spell the end of things, and the Uber's now game for Seeds. They're going to get two frags and a third now on Ams. I mean, this repush on the seconds now looking a little bit good. So fearful though, I mean, they're moving so, so slowly and they're giving a lot of respect for Salentes here. I'll pick yeah, it up though but... and that does look like they'll secure things just for the moment. Yeah, Ascent were quite happy to commit to a lot of those fights, but they didn't have Uber just yet. Uh, Seed was about to get it, I think they were playing for a force, but you don't just walk in without an Uber when Lucas is in your face, man. That guy did got two pick, quick picks with the stickies and created the opening for them to move forward on to second now, as he is trying to pressure on mid. Finally gets the pop from Seed, so this is looking better from Swift if they can lock out this choke. Lucas is so keen to go forward here, juggling Connor for oh, the second pop. time. Oh, oh my, my god! god. god. <laughs> The most I've seen in so long. <laughs> that was insane from Swift. Lucas with the stickies, the two pipes, and the final rocket from Pappy. That was incredible team play from Swift to shut down Connor. Both of them former teammates still gonna get make a last ditch attempt onto uh, Seeds' life, but now they're gonna be in a dominant position as they take second with a 50%, 60% Uber advantage. They're still too dead for Ascent, and I would like to see Swift move on this right now. Yeah, it. I mean. That incredible pick, I mean, you know, it, it's flashy, but it's also so, so important. They build such an advantage off that, and, I mean, we're going to have Credo sniping, but realistically, it's just going to be a case of Swift can just push forward, use their Uber nice and early, conserve all the health that they need, and just start moving forward to be taking this last. They know the sniper's there, they know they're going to have to use early. Lucas is going to be jumped again, and it doesn't look like Credo's going to be the first casualty, so that pick potential not quite there on the side of a set now, and... Soldiers have to play super far forward to try and start denying this point. They take down Seed, so the slow fight should be going their way. Ams is 
doing well towards point, but there's so much wow. cap coming in. The damage is coming out, and this is going Swift. all the way. It's Absolute fragging machine of a team. They look so good in team fights. I've not seen this from, from them in a while. Uh, maybe I've just been not, not watching the right teams, but this is exactly what I love to see. They take certain advantages, they walk in, they get the space. Seeds goes down, but they're in deep positions committing aggressively to fights and they get the frags. It's so nice to watch when teams play this, uh, this kind of aggressive uh, team fights and they use player advantages in their favor and now the momentum is definitely with them as uh, Lucas and Phil looking across to each other on point Gink is on the right hand side getting ready for a bomb here this could be big Drax already in Gink's behind them on the point now gets massive damage onto point gets two frags and he's gonna clean up corner as well Gink with the real opening but Ams gets the frag onto seeds to tie things up a little bit if he can win this 1v1 with Scruff it actually might play out for them well uh, but it's gonna be a bit messy here. Drac surely gonna die on this mid now, and it looks to be uh, a swift mid. It really does. Slanter's losing his life, and yep, Drac getting picked up right at the end. So good stuff from Scruff. It seemed to be that the swift played, you know, just just a little bit slow, and they kind of baited the full aggression from Ascent. I mean, if Ams hadn't ever kind of slipped and slithered past the lines and taken down seeds, that could have been really, really good for them. But. Even still, you know, a, a mid win's a mid win, and they are still 2 1 up here. So, continuing to be in the leading position, and even with an absolutely minute about 3% advantage. So, effectively equal at this point, but 9 minutes 50 to go, and it's going to be ball in a sense court for the minute. Yeah, and there's just been. I don't know, I feel like. Drac has had a couple moments, but it seems like he's been getting shot down a lot otherwise. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like we don't see the usual the usual work that Drac can do on a flank uh, coming into play in this game. Swift looking quite content to just play it back. Ascent have reverted back to their main man, their 41 fragger from map 1, Credu on the sniper. Uh, he's going to be charging up the shot and walking up to choke here, looking for a line up. Lucas is kind of close to the rock. Gink goes down on top of the crate, so that's the opening. Oh, oh my god, classy crazy. as well. Credu is going off. That's ridiculous. Those two frags are so, so important. You see how open this flank is now. Papping has to rotate just for that fear of Drac, and as a result, going through choke is going to be the entire goal of Ascent right now. Getting a lot of damage towards Lucas. You see how well they pick out these different players, and the body blocking on Seize. There's no way he gets out of this. So, oh, so good from Ascent, and it's just going to be pure desperation plays from Swift. Lucas, he gets taken out before he can really do anything. It's such a confident position for Ascent to play now, and they can just keep working around this sniper, this threat. Any long angles, Crady's going to be there just ready to dome you. Yeah, my eyes are going to be on Credu because he is feeling confident. They've got about a 30% uber advantage as Seeds just spawns uh, now. The Ascent players are looking to move towards Lobby Amps, just checking things out. They're probably going to want to use this advantage, uh, or at the very least get a sack going while they have it. Uh, Credu is still lining up that shot. I mean, it's so... Taking your eyes off Credu for two seconds when he's on Sniper is probably the wrong thing to do. Takes the shot, gets the body shot onto Scruff. That's the opening frag, and Ascent are definitely going to want to go with this. Yeah, I mean, you know, granted it's only an engineer, you think it doesn't matter that much, but, I mean, that gun is just going to be going down super, super easy now. And Pappy as well, Condog still hasn't actually used, he was on about 30 health there, so absolutely pulls it still from Condog, and you see how much cap time they're getting before anyone from Swift can move forward at all. They can play so slow, focusing all these frags, everything is going their way. They'll lose one player in that entire last push. That's just going to be an equalizer right there. Yeah, and it looks like... It's the same story as we were talking about earlier. When Swift are doing well and they get their rounds on, it's because they're looking so good as a team. But all it takes is one of the star players from Ascent to have a few big moments and they can push them back so far. Credu doing a great job there uh, of getting those opening picks and keeping the momentum on Ascent's side. Going into this mid, it looks like they're going to go for the same approach, you believe. They're going to keep that sniper of Credu at the choke and they're going to see what they can do with it. Yep, so they're going to be playing a slightly more aggressive uh, this time. They are going to have Slenters on Soldier again, so Deep Bombs is going to be his idea. Getting a lot of damage towards Lucas with Soldiers on the side of Ascent, combining really, really well. But they both should be dying here just about, actually. Slenters absolutely dipping and diving and making his way out, but Condog will be the one who's not quite able to stay alive. So he'll be losing his life here, and you see, I feel like Swift's ability to kind of push across as a unit is just kind of counteracting so many of these individual ascent plays yeah absolutely and i, I feel like the the spearheads of those team pushes classy and scruff have been so good at cleaning up frags 
Uh, Gink, Pappy, and Lucas doing good jobs of dealing damage without committing, making sure they stay alive. And I feel like, yeah, it's just a well-oiled fragging machine. They look so good in team fights right now that I'm sure they'll be able to use this 80% uber advantage and get something for it. Uh, it looks like there is no sniper, though they are probably going to be a bit afraid of that. So if they can check this last hold and see what they're up against, then they should be feeling a bit more confident going forward as that advantage is slowly, slowly taking away. It is still about 50% though, it is plenty enough for Lucas to try and jump through. His first jump gets denied though, which makes things a little bit more difficult. He can't take that position towards that left hand side. And actually the first frag of this last push is going to be on Classy, happy as well. He tries to get position up top along with Gink, but I mean, he's going to be losing his life as well. Gink's, I mean, Gink is towards top. I'm not sure if somehow people didn't see him. He's actually directly above them. Thankfully, Ams is checking his corners and Craig is going to be finishing him up. So, I mean... All important, just that one little bit of spam means Lucas can't quite jump through his sticky, gets shot away or whatever, can't take that position. And Ascent just, you know, goes off it. They take that position. Oh, that control. Fight. Lucas gets bombed by Salentis and he has to jump away, but Lucas with a crazy pipe to clean up that frag. Uh, so that might be enough to slow them down. They're only on a 30% uber advantage, our Ascent. Uh, but yeah, as you're saying that Lucas just couldn't get the entry with the jump. And I feel like the critical mistake for them there was not checking out the last hole. They didn't have a scout or anyone really peek and see where the, where the gun was positioned, where the heavy was. So when he jumped in, uh, he had to kind of readjust his, his target selection. Uh, in any case, we do see Gink on the sniper. He's another player like Kredu, uh, both of them sniping now actually, so who can get the better of it? Uh, Gink is quite good in uh, sniper duels. He's, he's been known for being a magic maker just in the same way Kredu is, but Kredu is the best sniper in the game right now. So it's going to be all eyes on those two to see who can get an opening. It is. You saw Salentis try and go aggressive towards Sewer there, straight into some sticky. So this far left hand side, a little bit open and Gink's recognizing it. Classy is going to be taking um, a pipe, but not before Freddy gets a headshot as well. So, about a 5v5 situation, these long angles won't really work for a set. And Ams is recognizing he's taking this solo Uber exchange. It's so interesting to see the way a set are playing these different positions. The second they lose that distance, they go to move things close. Drac still behind them and potentially could be causing a little bit of trouble as Swift tries to move towards Choke. But it does look like all teams are going to be getting out with all their players back up towards a Choke out point. They're going to be playing things. Just a little bit equal. Still, Gink is gonna be sniping at this point. There's about four minutes left to go in this equal game. So, I mean, at this point, you know, tiny little mistakes, tiny little kind of, you know, an individual body shot or headshot here and there can make all the difference, especially the fact that Sen is on their second. Yeah, absolutely, and I really like that Swift didn't overcommit there on the second after that Uber trade. They managed to navigate around it so that they didn't really lose too much, and they managed to get back out into the safety of mid at the end of it. So really good rotational play from their players just in the middle of that team fight. Uh, I think Ascent are quite happy not to push that because they know that they can just shut down, um, just take control here and keep it slow. Uh, Credu has switched back onto the scout, but we do still have Kink on the sniper. He is charging up at the choke. Uh, gonna get closer and closer. Lucas is with him to protect him, so eyes on Gink. Sale is really close against Body Shot, but it's not gonna be enough for either team to get a secure advantage and move forward here. Uh, I do wonder how long it'll be before oh, I set Lord decides Drac, to... he's directly behind them. They haven't seen! Oh, um, the trigger discipline from Drac right now. No one has any idea. He has three Swift players in front of him, and they've just got absolutely... Oh, this is ridiculous. Okay, Drac's in. He gets one rocket. He gets two rockets. He's gonna be forcing seeds. That's absolutely just disgusting. Wow, Drac. He could, <laughs> I mean, you could say that he could have got more with that, but he got exactly what he needed, and Swift were none the wiser. It was so close with him, so patient. Excellent individual play from Drac there to get that force, but they did lose a second player in Credu, so Swift aren't in too bad of a position. They could probably threat for, threaten for a backup. Classy's aware that Drac is dead, and he has pushed up top PC, and he's just hiding in there, but he does get spotted, as it looks like that's where a center going to be pushing from. So Swift are aware of it, and they, they've actually seen the rotation as well, so really good play from Classy to keep the information uh, up for his team. I mean, you see that in all of this, it's only actually about a 25% advantage for a set, so this could be some big mistake, especially if they lose someone early. It looks like that may well just be Salentis. A big crossbow from Connor is going to make this super important in terms of keeping the soldiers alive, but Uber's now up the seat. Happy jumping all the way behind, going to be Uber's traded. Slightly, slightly better for a set, I believe, but the two frags is going to be what matters the most. Happy as well, super far behind, so... He's going to more or less not be able to do a great deal here, and it does look like a good opportunity for Ascent to just kind of momentum to keep pushing forward. Brady though, overextending, losing his life, I'm not quite sure whether that's something which is particularly necessary for Ascent right now. They seem to be in such a good position, but losing that one frag and Ams as well Kick. to Pappy from behind this recontested on for Swift. 
Yeah, Gink actually was the first one to peek in on mid there. Had a shot onto Connor, but didn't quite manage to get it. Uh, Classy was in the back lines. Going to keep the pressure on Ascent, keep them backpedaling a little bit. Scruff is now peeking and showing himself at Choke, giving Ascent kind of an idea of what's going on in the mid here. They know that even though they got a bunch of cap time, it's not going to be quite enough for them to go in. Uh, so they're just playing it a bit safe right now. Uh, 1 minute 20 left. This could go to a golden cap, that's how things are looking, as both teams still have their uber and need to get something going. And I feel like Gink is going to want to do something big here to uh, start the clockwork machine that is Swift. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, oh my lord, that headshot on Drax is going to be super important. And Cradle is well dying. This really isn't good at all for us. They're having to try and back through Choke, but their uber is going to be disappearing any second. Now, Salentis tries to jump in, tries to get some damage. Lucas is going to get taken down, but these body shots still raining out from Gink. That headshot on the fill, so, so good, and they're focusing these fragging classes. You see, at this point, Condor doesn't really matter. He barely will even get his uber up in time in terms of last anyway, so it's going to be surging forward for Swift, moving to Rara. Both scouts and the soldier. One's going to be going down to so Credit Heavy. He's actually just mowing people down right now. It's going to be so much on Classy, but these rockets from Drac are just fantastic. Man, I mean, and it's, it's not even just that Heavy is like, like a crazy class, and Credu's tracking is so good, and he put out so much damage on Scruff, who was the most important initial frag, um, and manages to get two more before going down, so Credu again coming up big for his team, really shutting down that offense. Seeds does make out alive. Sorry, no, he didn't. Uh, he respawned there. Um, so big advantage for Condog. Scruff it's just two seconds though left on the clock. I mean, what's it going to mean? It's going to mean nothing. It's going to be a 2-2. At the end of a uh, map two, we're going into a golden cap. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah, it could go completely either way. I have no idea who has the upper hand so far in this game. That's really good performance from both teams, credit especially. I mean, the amount that he was doing that game, that ascent really needed and was so important, is is kind of crazy. Uh, you, you'd like to hope that it would be a bit more of a a team game in the same way that it is on Swift, but no doubt the rest of the Ascent guys are doing a good job of enabling Credu to do what he does. Um, so credit where credit is due. I do want to have a look at the logs of that, so maybe we can get them up on stream. Yeah, let's have a let's have a little look. Does look like you know, oh Credu a, a little bit a uh, a little bit quieter this game. You know, twenty four for twenty, about two hundred and eighty just thirteen uh, headshots. On the DPMs. You know, it is it is what it is. What can you say? I mean, like you you can see. One of the significant differences between the teams is I feel like this Finnish power duo in terms of scouts is absolutely crazy and it allows them to to play a different kind of game. They can play, they can and do play less kind of team based because they know the amount of times they can take these kind of solo Amzubas and still force a multi. And that all comes down to mechanically, are you going to hit those shots? And, you know, do you know that? Does the other team know that? Are they going to react, you know, in an um, in expected way? Um, who's standing out in terms of uh, in terms of you news? Sorry, uh, who's standing out? Um, yeah, you know this game. I feel like Lucas looked a bit shakier than he did on Logjam. Um, he definitely wasn't able to put out the same kind of damage, but I feel like part of that is because Ascent are feeling more comfortable on this map and just know what to expect. Um, so that opened up Phil a bit more. We see a bit more even stats between him and Lucas. Um, but yeah, it's like we were talking at the start of Logjam. The, that's only the real matchup where there's significant skill disparity and you know you look at the the, the finish shoe of amps and credit and you know it's scary but uh classy and scruff did a great job of of being the the cleanup crew for swift they did a great yeah. job of finding a lot of those frags both of them top fragging on the server uh, and i feel like they're doing a really good job honestly everyone on swift is looking good I think the thing that would make the difference and set aside the teams is really if one of the demos can step up uh, and cut out any of the small mistakes and just be that consistent performer that we know they're both capable of being. I think it's really important what you say about the kind of the scout competition because it, it shows it shows a difference in the team play because Scruff and Classy had significantly more frags between them than Credo and Ams, but they are far lower on the damage because, like you said, they are that cleanup crew. They're playing with the rest of their team. They're playing with Lucas and Pappy and Gig. They're letting those guys get the damage, get some of the position, and they're just focusing off those picks in the, you know, in the peripheral parts of the fight orb, you know, where the damage gets called. They're not going forward and trying to take these 1v1s and, you know, taking the beam and just running fully at guys all the time. They're playing a different kind of scout role, but they're being just as effective.
Absolutely, and we are readying up now as we're getting into this golden gap. I think we are probably going to see Crowdo snipe to this mid because he's been doing it thus far. Actually, it looks like he's going sniper, so taking spy, uh, taking the sniper early to confuse the spy check of Swift. So maybe they're going to be walking into a mid that they're set up to lose here. It could go either way. That being said, we're going to see Lucas and Phil looking at each other across from these health kits. Phil, not going to decide to take it. Um, we do see that everyone should be aware now that Crowdo is not sniping. Gig's going to be the first death isolated on the left hand side here ascent are taking control of point but it looks like swift still kind of want to fight this now that classy's died and pappy goes down they're just going to be leaving this one everyone on the sense still alive and chasing yeah they're gonna have to be going all the way through one in this damage oh what a little air pipe onto salentas but if only it didn't result in him losing his life as well so there's no stickies towards that there's no hard deny in terms of these doorways and I mean, there's a bit of an opportunity for Ascent to just try and walk through, possibly even far right, possibly just send a guy in for a sack, but at the same time, I mean, this is a golden cap. They don't have to rush things, we're only about, you know, 50 seconds in, they can uh, play a little bit slow and it looks like they're going to be putting good old Salentas back on the spy. Yeah, he did it once before and made it work. No one was really aware of him uh, when he went for the seeds pick last time. This time they're definitely going to be expecting it. When you're in a golden cap situation and it comes to a stalemate, almost all the thoughts of what's possible to do in these situations goes through your head. I mean, we've seen it all before, the spies, the snipers, uh, even even NG plays with Frontier Justice crits uh, from Swift to I-63. You know, everyone knows about everything that can be done, so if, a, if a Swift aren't expecting a spy here, then they really should get punished for it, but it looks like Sil is just slowly creeping up into panic. Gonna keep plenty of uh, plenty of charge on his cloak and dagger. Just slowly getting to position. Classy is spy checking he's around on it. the Classy's absolutely on it. I don't know what he's doing <laughs> right now. He absolutely loves it. He's checking every single corner. Salentes, though, I mean, he's invisible. He's not really doing a great deal other than feeding his team all the info they need. No one needs to take risks in lobby in terms of uh, finding out exactly what's happening on this swift hold because Salentes is there. He's, he's playing towards his door, and I mean, there's a board where he can actually body block seeds getting out through a doorway based on a sack here. So. Super, super interesting to see how they do this. Rack's going to be a casualty in this little peek towards lobby, though. So, as Still much as... has decloaked by the right spawn door. No one's turned around yet, so no one has seen him. Pappy almost gets a gets a gun. I think Seeds has heard it. They definitely are aware now. Classy trying to spy check. Sil, very wise to be aware of it, and is jumping out. Um, and Gink actually trying to get some damage off on Connor. Gets him down to 50 HP. Uh, but we're probably going to see Sil try and switch off if he can uh maybe gonna commit forward again but there's not really much being done from either team right now they're still playing it safe gonna wait up for gink to respawn and maybe he's gonna go for another off class i mean right now this uh this spy from Salentis, I mean, he's, got, he's gone all the way back to change off, but this threat of a spy, you can see how distracting it is for all of the Swift players. You have Classy permanently just running around trying to spy check. You, you see how nervous Siege is in terms of constantly checking every angle that easily things can fall through the cracks here in terms of their defense, all based on this threat of someone who isn't even there. Yeah, and now we're going to see Credu walking through one, going for a deep sightline, but he doesn't see anything from Seeds. Seeds in a good position there. Uh, so he's going to have to readjust his position. Now he's going towards rollout. Gets a headshot onto Lucas, but he was healthily buffed, so it's not going to be enough for a pick. As Phil is peeking down that one angle with Credu, Seeds moved a bit in his position, uh, so now that he is exposed to that. It's really kind of just a, a game of who can find that opening at the right time, who can read each other's rotations uh, ahead of the other team. But it looks like uh, Ascent now moving towards Lobby, and they're going to try and get a, a sightline for Credu from there. And nothing is clean though for either team. Every time they're peeking anywhere, they're taking so much damage. Both teams are doing a great job of pressuring forward and just making it difficult for anyone to walk. He's going to try and get a little bit of information, but even still, you can't even kind of get out rollout. Like you said, the threat of the sniper, the stickies, the soldiers, it's, it's so, so hard. And at this point, I feel like Swift's almost kind of playing just to, to hold inevitably. They're only now... I mean, no, they, they have a spy, but he was only really checking classes. They're so defensive that there's... Credo's no in. Way. Oh my oh god! My. One That's shot is ridiculous. all the man needs. He just goes for the hero shot on the right side. That's going to be no uber for Swift. They're coming in, dealing with the sentry gun. Uh, Classy is on the pyro close to them, but they're going to have the frag on him. Everyone else from Swift is basically in spawn as they are pressuring the point now in this golden cap. Only three left alive. Kink and Pappy going to be the last ones to try it, but it's not going to be enough. GG's are called. 1-0 in the golden cap. Ascent going to take this map off the back of an incredible play again from Credu, who has to be man of the match for these two games tonight.
He has to be. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of ridiculous because if you give Freddy the sniper rifle and give him five minutes, he'll just, he can just win you games, you know? His consistency, yeah, he's not hitting every single shot, but when he needs to just like turn it on, he's on it. He's an absolute machine. Absolute machine indeed, and he's going to keep it going into the uh, post-game DM fighting. Uh, I don't know if it's worth looking at the logs from the Golden Cap, but it's definitely worth thinking about how that game played out. Um, so really good stuff from both teams, especially on process. Uh, I mean, Swift did a good job of making it competitive on Logjam, but neither team looked as comfortable on that map. It is still quite new uh, to to some of these players, but the process was a really high-level game, Ipoli. Uh, really good things being seen from both teams and honestly I think there's there's going to be environments where Ascent can't rely on those individual plays and they can't rely on Crider to do that every time, perhaps against Swift perhaps against better teams but the, the team fighting from Swift looks really promising and I think if they can keep that up um, then they'll be a, a good contender at Copenhagen um, do we know how, how the points of today's game, oh, I guess they lose both maps so they get one point and that would be enough presumably to get them into the playoff spot I mean yeah I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go but but with, after, with another two weeks yeah, after, after the friendly upset and the fact there's only two weeks remaining this may for the end of Swift's playoff chances but it also might depend on some of the other results so we'll have to, we'll have to wait for someone with a far better maths brain than a <laughs> they need to work it all out but um I, I really agree with you what you said in terms of like it, it's so great when you get to see two teams that have fundamentally different play styles and how they'll play the exact same situation they'll play the same advantages but they'll just take such a different approach and just seeing how that interacts with each other like i said it's, it's, it's really it, it's great to see in a game like this it's gonna be really interesting to see you said hopefully into playoffs but if not um like you said copenhagen yeah, I mean, for sure, both teams are going to be looking good. Uh, we're going to see a disky playing in terms of Doctor Phil uh, in place of Doctor Phil for Copenhagen, and I believe the roster that we saw tonight is the full roster that we're going to be seeing from Swift. Um, so they're definitely getting good practice in for LAN. Uh, but in any case, I feel like it's it's almost weird to say, but I think maybe Swift were the better team tonight. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a controversial opinion, but so much of what they were doing was really good and really well executed and they had really good reasons for doing what they were doing um at the end of the day what it came down to the, the thing that separated the two teams was swift not being able to shut down uh, some of the individual players from ascent i think i think that's the tale of tonight but i do think equally we do have a couple players from uh swift and ascent in for interviews we do i think we've got ams and ginky how's it going guys it's going good going good so, crush, um... of defeat, crush of defeat Crushing defeat. Well, I don't know. We've just been talking about how uh, how interesting this game was to watch, and especially process. You guys, both Swift and Sense, seem to have very kind of fundamentally different um, play styles. I guess my first question is going to go to you, Gink. Kind of going into this game, what were you thinking? Do you think this was was this a kind of game where you thought you know maybe we could eke out a win here and there? Were you feeling fairly confident, or was it just the fact that? You saw how points were looking, how dominant Ascent has been to basically all teams other than Seven, and you were thinking, you know, maybe we don't stand too much of a chance. Um, well, we know that Crater is kind of like a, a beast on Sniper, and it's unfortunate that these two maps are kind of kind of nice on Sniper, especially Process. So I think our plan is to try shut them down as much as we can. Like we didn't, I don't think we played slow on any of the mids. We went, we tried to go as aggressive as possible to minimize the damage Crater could possibly do. Yeah. It, it definitely seemed like a lot of your mids on process, they, they were looking really good. There, there was a lot of confident play, like you say, you know, going aggressive, moving forward and, you know, going for some of these, not kind of all aggression fights, but kind of, you know, buying those, those real important oppor those opportunities to kind of surge forward, get that damage. And, you know, we were saying that the way you guys played so much more around you, Pappy and Lucas kind of dealing the damage and then Scruff and Classy coming a little bit later, as opposed to Ascent which play far more heavily in terms of their scouts as damage dealers. Um, Ams, I thought it was, uh, it, it was really interesting to see how you guys took a lot of these these scrappy kind of uber exchanges. Is this something you guys really like to do? It's something you want to kind of keep doing moving forward, taking some of these scrappy fights and just focusing these peripheral players and make it just super difficult for, you know, for, for these medics to flash everyone. Mm. How many Ams? He's not here. I assume it's okay. not, he will he will answer that maybe a little bit later. Okay, we'll, we'll go back to Gink <laughs> then. News. Oh, dear can you, God. Can you give us some uh, give us some questions here? 
Yeah, well, I'll throw some questions your way, Gink. Um, so, I mean, the thing that was standing out to me uh, for you guys on Swift, I felt like you guys were doing a, a great job in team fights. Uh, I feel like perhaps, you know, when the Uber trades were going on, it was a bit trickier. But as soon as it was a team fight and there weren't Ubers in play, your focus fire was some of the best I've seen uh, in recent season of ETF 2L. Is that, has that been a focus of how you guys play is creating team fights and, you know, picking apart individual players? Um, I, I think it's, it's like... I think people were just hyped, uh, and people like uh, like the soldiers are jumping in and scoff screaming to kill him, and everyone's just like looking at him. I think it was like the just like an official thing, like people were super hyped after we got some rounds going, and like we you know there's a possibility we could have took points off a cent. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was saying to Ibili, um and perhaps Amps can comment on this now that he's back oh. on the channel. <laughs> Hi. Can you guys hear uh, me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, I'm just unplugged. I'm sorry. No worries. Um, in my honest opinion, I thought in terms of uh, teams, Swift, I think you guys looked like the better team tonight. Um, Amps, I don't know if it's different from your point of view, but I felt like you guys owed a lot to certain players on your team. Uh, in key moments, especially, we saw at the end of the Golden Cap there, Credu had really important moments, uh, especially on Sniper as well. Do you think that for Ascent, um, like, what, what's the kind of idea behind your team in, in tonight's game? Because uh, I don't know if you felt the same, but I thought you guys were a bit outclassed in terms of team play, uh, but your individual stepped up. Is that something that you, you usually expect from your team? I, mean, I don't think we were outclassed, if I'm honest. I think Swift are uh, like a really good team. So obviously, we're going to lose some fights. We're going to win some fights. You know, It's going to be a hard game regardless. I think like we just tell Credit that if he's feeling it, he can snipe whenever he basically wants to. Just I believe that if he's feeling it, then it's worth it to have him on Sniper. Uh, I think we play fine without him on Sniper as well. And in fact, in process, uh, like we found out that our mids were way better without him on Sniper rather than having him play Sniper there because they had like really good counter mids to our Sniper mids. So like, I don't know, maybe maybe we go outclassed on process a little bit, but I think we still played really well as a team. And I think us playing to like Credu's advantages or like us playing to the advantage of having Credu is just how we're supposed to play it if he's hitting his shots. Yeah. That's fair enough. I was gonna say, um, so would you say that in in general with the team, you're you, you've got less of a kind of this is exactly how we'll play every situation, and more of a kind of okay, if if certain players are feeling like they're having a good day, you're kind of gonna adapt your play. You're gonna obviously you've got well six incredible players on your team. Do do you feel like you play slightly more to the strength of your players rather than the strength of an overall team philosophy? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I think Credo is the best sniper in the league by far. I mean, I don't mean any disrespect to the other snipers. Like, Kof is great too, and Gink. I think most people too, but, would agree with you on that. Yeah, I think the fact that we have that, it would be dumb not to use it to our advantage. So we often play around him a lot on maps that kind of favor, um, favor that. But I've, I still think we're pretty good on maps that don't require a sniper that much. Like, or, or 5, C, 5 CP gameplay is still good. It's like, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how we're playing around Pro, and even without having Gorgo Sniper, I think we're still doing good. Like, uh, and then yeah. uh, going forward, then in the last two weeks of the season and, and into playoffs, um, who do you think are going to be your biggest opponents? Obviously, besides Seven, uh, but for the other teams in the league, who do you think are pose the biggest threat to you? Uh, I, I guess most people would assume the big two names to be Swift and Faint, but uh, what is it from your perspective? Uh, it's Swift for sure. I think we're pretty comfortable against Faint. I think on a good day, we're pretty comfortable against Swift as well. But like as they showed today, I think they are. Um, I think they're actually miles above, uh, like team structure wise, uh, above the other, like lower prem teams. Uh, like Faint are good; they have good talent. But I feel like they don't have leadership as good as Swift. And I think Swift are they're like all individually really smart players. So I think um, yeah, we're gonna probably see them again in the playoffs, and I expect like a hard game. And how much of tonight, uh, I guess this question, we'll take it to Gink first and then Amps. Um, this season, obviously, we've been playing Logjam. Uh, it's not a map that most teams are super comfortable on compared to the more staple maps of 5CP. Uh, do you think this would have gone uh, a different way if potentially what, like you guys weren't playing Logjam tonight? Uh, I mean, like, if it wasn't Logjam, I think it'd be Badlands. And Badlands is my worst map on like every class. So I, I would have hated it more, I think, but maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it would have been different. But, uh, 
Logjam isn't isn't that good of a map as well, to be honest. Not to discredit the creator. Fair enough. And uh, apps, any any comments on Logjam? Do you think you guys were weaker than you would be on other five CP maps? Um. Oh, I don't mind it. I think it's kind of random on Logjam. Like, I don't think there's one team that's better than Logjam, better on Logjam than other teams yet. Like, it's a new map, so everybody's kind of adjusting to it. And probably every day people are still coming up with new strats for it and like making corrections to their pushes and stuff. So I don't think anybody's like skill level has peaked on Logjam yet. So it's kind of a, a, like a more random map than most other maps, I think. But I think we're fine on it. I don't, I don't mind it. And I, I like it because we can have Cardio and Sniper when we're playing badly. So <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And yeah. <laughs> Um, that's that's about as much that I have to ask. Eplee, do you have any final questions for these guys? No, I think it's all good. I think we can we can start uh, we can start wrapping some things up, doing some um doing some shout outs. I guess we'll start with Ams. Shout out to you guys for the cast and Swift for a good game. Good stuff. How about Gink? Any shout outs for you? Yeah, shout out to my team and Ascent, of course, and you guys for casting. Stuff uh, news. Uh, shout outs to these guys for giving us a great game to watch, some real highlight moments uh, from both maps. Shout outs to the stream viewers and chat, you for co casting, and obviously Beat Out for being on production today. Cool. I'll do our final little shout outs. Obviously, Swift and Ascent for an absolute bang of a game is really, like we said so many times, it's always so interesting to see two teams with fundamentally different play styles kind of clash it out, especially with players of this caliber. And I'm hoping to see both these teams hopefully in another, in another matchup. Uh, in playoffs in just a few short weeks and definitely at copenhagen so yeah shout out to you guys shout out to gink and ams for coming and do some interviews it's always good to talk to the players and get an insight obviously shout out to beta news for producing it all with me now i'm not quite sure when the next tftv game will be but if you keep an eye on obviously tftv itself and the twitter you should be finding out but we're gonna have a bunch of week six coverage going on all throughout this week so yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys then up until now. Congratulations to a Swift. Commiserations to Swift. Uh, you know what I just said? I said it incorrectly. Whatever. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>